There are items that once were part of our everyday life that are now obsolete. Things we thought we couldn't live without that have simply gone out of style or have been replaced by newer technologies. Once leading edge tech is now outdated and forgotten. In this episode of Revealing History, we'll take a walk down memory lane and explore some of these everyday items that are now obsolete. Let's get started. Pagers, also known as beepers, were wireless telecommunications devices that displayed alphanumeric or voice messages. Pagers were developed in the 1950s, but didn't become widely used until the 1980s. They were popular among medical professionals, first responders, drug dealers, and other professionals who needed to be reached quickly. Pagers were eventually replaced by mobile phones and smartphones which offered more features and greater convenience. Although it was still common in the early 2000s to see somebody with a pager and a cell phone. And mobile phones and smartphones allowed users to make calls, send text messages, and access the internet, and do so much more. The widespread availability of the cellular networks and the internet made pagers obsolete. Pagers are still used today in some industries, such as healthcare, where they are preferred for their reliability and simplicity. And some pager apps, such as Signal 4, can be used on smartphones to replace traditional pagers. The A-Track tape was a magnetic tape sound recording technology that was popular from the mid-1960s to the early 80s. Officially known as the Stereo 8, the A-Track format gained popularity because of its convenience and portability giving it an advantage over vinyl records. By the late 1960s, it was the largest segment in the consumer electronics market. The introduction of the compact cassette tape format in the late 1960s offered several advantages over 8-track tapes, including better audio quality, longer play time, and a more reliable mechanism. Cassette tapes eventually gained popularity and dominated the market which led to the decline of 8-tracks. By 1982, music studios stopped shipping 8-tracks to retailers, and car manufacturers removed the 8-track players from their models. Of course, the cassette tape gave way to the CD, which in turn was replaced by digital music. The Sony Walkman, introduced in 1979, was a revolutionary portable audio player that allowed people to listen to their music privately unlike the popular boomboxes which blasted out music to an entire city block. The Walkman was a huge success, especially among teens, all of whom seemed to have one, and it changed the relationship people had with music and technology. The Walkman was available with a diversity of features and styles, which suggested that there would be a product that was the perfect choice for every consumer. The Walkman was eventually replaced by digital music players such as the iPod and MP3 players, which offered greater storage capacity, better sound quality, and more convenience. The rise of digital music players allowed people to store thousands of songs on a single device, and the ability to stream music online made it possible to access millions of songs instantly. But the Walkman paved the way for the development of these portable audio players which today allow us an unlimited number of songs wherever we go. The typewriter is a mechanical machine for typing characters on paper. It was a significant invention that transformed American business in the mid 19th century. The standard price then for a typewriter was $100, which was several times the value of a good personal computer today when adjusted for inflation. The most popular model of early typewriters was the Underwood No. 5, which was produced by the millions. The introduction of the electric typewriter was a significant advance in the typewriter field. It was basically a mechanical typewriter with the typing stroke powered by an electric motor. The need for high-speed printing machines to convert the output of computers to a readable form prompted the introduction of a specialized high-speed form of typewriter in 1953. The IBM Selectric typewriter replaced type bars and moving carriages with a printing element, a sphere no larger than a golf ball 
which revolutionized the typewriter industry. The typewriter was eventually replaced by the word processor, which in turn was replaced by modern computers. What was once a common sight in every office has now become just a distant memory. The floppy disk, also known as a diskette, is a type of thin and flexible magnetic storage medium in a square or nearly square plastic enclosure. Floppy disks were first introduced in the early 1970s and became widely used in the 1980s and 90s. These disks were popular for their portability and ease of use, but they had limited storage capacity and were prone to data corruption and physical damage. Floppy disks were eventually replaced by storage media such as USB flash drives, external disk drives, optical drives, and cloud storage. These newer storage technologies offer greater storage capacity, faster data transfer rates, and a greater reliability compared to the floppy disk. Floppy disks are no longer manufactured, but are still widely available as new old stock should you have a computer that accepts one. The VHS recorder was a popular electromechanical device that recorded analog audio and video from broadcast television or other sources on a removable magnetic tape. The VHS recorder was introduced in the 1970s and became a mainstream in American and European living rooms for more than 20 years. It wasn't uncommon to go into somebody's home and see stacks of VHS tapes next to the television. However, the VHS recorder was eventually replaced by digital video recorders such as DVD recorders and DVRs, which offered better quality, greater storage capacity, and more convenience. The introduction of the DVD format to American consumers in March of 1997 triggered the market share decline of VHS. Despite DVD's better quality, VHS is still used in home recording of video content. Nowadays, streaming services such as Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime have replaced the need for physical media, and people can watch their favorite movies and TV shows on demand without the need for a VHS recorder or a DVD player. Personal Data Assistant, or PDA, was a handheld device that provided computing and information storage and retrieval capabilities for users. Essentially, they were a digital version of a day planner. Now, some referred to the PDA as a Palm Pilot, which was a brand of PDA. It's kind of like referring to a tissue as a Kleenex. They were popular in the 1990s and early 2000s and were the predecessor to the smartphone. The PDAs had a small physical keyboard and some had an electronically sensitive pad on which handwriting could be received. A PDA was used for schedule and address book storage and retrieval and note taking, and some could even send and receive email. Like practically every other piece of tech, the PDA became obsolete with the invention of the smartphone, which does everything a PDA could do and much, much more. The cathode ray tube or CRT television was a popular device that used a vacuum tube containing one or more electron guns to display images on a phosphorescent screen. The first successful prototype of a CRT television was developed in 1927 with the first commercially available set hitting the market in Germany in 1934. In 1954, RCA produced some of the first color CRTs, and by 1960, 90% of all U.S. households owned a TV. Originally broadcast in black and white, by the late 1960s, television shows began to be regularly shot in color. Beginning in the late 1990s and into the early 2000s, CRT television sets began to be replaced by flat screen televisions, such as the LCD, LED, and OLED TVs, which offered better quality, greater energy efficiency, and more convenience. And if anybody ever tried to move a CRT television, you can attest to the fact that flat screen TVs are a heck of a lot lighter. The rapid advances and falling prices of flat panel technology spelled doom for the competing display technologies such as CRT, rear projection, and plasma displays. Despite being a dead technology, CRT televisions continue to linger in museums, arcades, video game tournaments, and the homes of dedicated fans. 
Nowadays, flat screen televisions are the standard and they have become an essential part of our daily lives. The Rolodex was a rotating file device used to store contact information, such as names, addresses, and phone numbers on small cards. It was popular in offices and homes for many years, and it was considered an essential tool for organizing contacts. One of its main drawbacks was its lack of portability. The Rolodex was eventually replaced by digital address books and contact management software, which offered greater convenience and more features. Today, people use various digital tools to manage their contacts, such as email clients, social media platforms, and cloud-based services. The Rolodex may be a thing of the past, but it still holds a special place in the hearts of those who remember the satisfying feeling of flipping through its cards. A rotary telephone is a type of phone that features a circular dial with numbered holes that rotate when the user dials a number. Rotary phones were once the be-all, end-all of telephones, and they ruled domestic communications for decades. To place a call, you simply place your finger on the first number you wish to dial, and rotate the dial clockwise until your finger touches the metal stop. Remove your finger from the opening and allow the dial to return to its original position. Repeat these steps for each number in the phone number you wish to call, and wait for the call to connect. Rotary phones were eventually replaced by touchtone phones, which offered greater convenience and more features, like one-touch speed dialing, caller ID, and even built-in memory for storing your favorite numbers. Today, rotary phones are considered vintage or retro items, and they are often used as decorative pieces or collector's items. It's funny to see today's generation struggling to use one, and there are even articles and videos online that demonstrates their use. Some people still use rotary phones today for their novelty value or as a way to relive the pleasures of a landline. If you're feeling nostalgic, you can still find rotary phones for sale on websites like Amazon and Etsy or at your nearest antique store. Recording images, first on photographic plates and then on film, began in the middle part of the 19th century. And film cameras would become the dominant method of capturing and recording images for the next 100 years. 35 millimeter film cameras were the go-to for capturing memories. Many of us can remember taking our pictures and then dropping off the film to have it developed and printed. And it could take hours or even days to find out whether those pictures of our precious memories even turned out. In the 1990s, digital cameras started to become more widely available and affordable, slowly replacing the 35mm film camera. Compared to today's modern digital camera, film cameras were more costly to use, offered limited storage, and took longer to see the end result. Digital cameras today allow photographers to take thousands of pictures and offers instant gratification, as you can see the results within seconds of taking the picture. Despite these drawbacks, film cameras still have a dedicated following among photographers who appreciate the unique look and feel of film. But for the everyday consumer, the days of the film camera are long gone. Pay phones were once a common sight on street corners, outside of convenience stores, and in other public spaces. If you needed to make a call, you'd simply pick up the receiver, drop in a dime or a quarter, and dial your number. And if you didn't know your number, most payphones had a phone book attached by a cable so you could look it up. And if you were a germaphobe, using a public telephone could be a harrowing experience. Payphones were often the target of vandalism and other nefarious activities, and they tended to be expensive to maintain. They also offered less privacy than modern communication options, and making long-distance calls was more expensive. Nowadays, everybody carries a phone in their pocket, which eliminates the need for payphones. While the smartphone has taken over as the dominant form of communication, there are still some payphones in use today. But most are just a memory of a simpler time. It's hard to believe, but there was once a time when people actually spoke to each other face to face. That's right, once upon a time, people actually left their homes and had meaningful conversations and relationships with other people. Sadly, those kinds of face-to-face -face relationships have become obsolete, replaced by technology such as text messages, social media posts, and emojis. 
I'm sure some of you remember using some of these inventions, and probably some we didn't mention. Which do you miss the most? And of those things you use every day now, which ones do you think will be gone in 20 years? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you enjoyed taking this walk down memory lane, check out our story about the 10 inventions that changed the world by clicking the screen now. And to support our work here, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, I'm Dennis Gill for Revealing History.